Are you ready for me? Yeah, it's all yours. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. All right. We're in our summer quarter. And our lesson title for today is Inheriting the Kingdom and Inherit Means to Receive from One's Ancestors. Hopefully everyone is online, have read the, the uh, text for today. And the text, it comes from Galatians 5, verses 13 to 26. And our key verse is for brethren, ye have been called unto liberty only uh, use not liberty for an uh, occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. That's Galatians 5 and 13. Now, the lesson intent is, uh, which is to compare desires that lead towards right and wrong choices and to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit and the blessings that come from making spirit-led choices. That's very, very important. Now, my le lesson objectives for today is, at the end of this lesson, I pray that you will understand that indulging in, in the flesh, we become slaves to the flesh and are not living in freedom. Number two is living life in the spirit is a life of obedience to God. And I pray that you will understand that when God's people are obedient to the Holy Spirit, they will experience freedom. Now, the devotional reading, which is very important to this lesson, it comes from Isaiah 44, verses 1, 40, um, 21 to 28. And the theme of those scriptures is Israel is not forgotten um, and Judah will be restored. Now, God's creation works uh, starts at the moment of conception. We don't have to go into that. It speaks for itself. God has perfect knowledge of man. Where can I flee from God's presence? These words stress the omnipotence of God. He is everywhere present at the same time. Now, you know, this psalm was written by David. We are forever in God's thoughts. He desires to have an intimate relationship with us where we bring all our needs to him. It should also cause a desire on our part to help others think about him. Now, verse 139, chapter um, mm, Psalms 139, verse 22, because we know that Psalms don't have chapters. It tells us that I hate them with perfect hatred. Some must think that the con that contradicts Christ's word. Love your enemy. However, David was so close to God, he hated to see God's name abused by his enemies. And he envisioned a world where, where those enemies did not exist. How about that? Thinking about that right now, that all the uh, evil that's going on in the world right, right this day. David was experiencing genuine human emotions because he wanted the earth cleansed of their presence. So in other words, David uh, loved the Lord just like we love the Lord. We feel hard, our hearts are so, so sad just to know of all the shooting and all the killings that are going on in the world today. But what we do is, we do, we know God is about his business and he, and he will resolve all of this that's going on. Now, our lesson setting for today is the book of Galatians is considered a book of Christian liberty directed to the Christians in Galatia. Paul had visited the churches in Galatia on each of his three journeys. And Paul addressed the issue that some Jewish teachers had begun to influence his convert 
to accept a different kind of teaching. The Jewish teachers were called troublemakers and they endure, in, endowed to add circumcision as a requirement for salvation. Paul vehemently spoke out against this teaching and he referred to it as a perversion of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See Galatians 1 and 7. Paul also believed that adding any works to the gospel message was akin to uh, turning away from God and falling from grace. Galatia was a mountainous region that was not hospit uh, hospitable to persons of faith. During that journey, they established many new churches in Asia and the southern region of the Roman territory of Galatia. While in Galatia, Paul evangelized the area. When Paul and Barnabas returned to their home base in Antioch, they discovered that some men came to Antioch um, just, um, just to, to keep something going. You know how, how folks are. Uh, a, this group of teachers intended to impose the law of Moses into the Gentile Christians. These uh, teachers were called Judaizers or legalists. The dispute between Paul and Barnabas and the Judaizers gave rise to the Jerusalem Council. See Acts 15. What was subsequently discovered was that the apostles of the Jerusalem church did not send these Judaizers. They came on their own to sow discord and disagreement among the Gentiles within the newly established churches. The book of Galatians came as a theological shock to many in the early church who insisted that believers add the law of Moses to their faith. Paul proclaimed freedom from the law and emphasized faith alone. I had the experience yesterday. I went to get gas at Safeway. And I had um, I had just come from a teaching uh, at uh, Rising Sun. And um, the young man, when I went to pay for my gas, the young man said, uh, you just come from church? I said, yes. I said, I was, uh, had to teach a class today. And he said, you know, uh, the Sabbath is on uh, uh, Saturday. I said, yeah. And I, he said, well, um, why they uh, serve uh, the Sabbath on Sunday? I said, because Jesus, it's because Jesus uh, rose again. He said, oh, I said, that's it. He said, well, nobody has the date. I said, the date's not important. I said, the important thing that he rose again and he's coming back. Have a good day. Left him standing there. He was ready for an argument about Sabbath day. Okay. We need to understand why we worship on Sunday. Okay. Sabbath day may be on Saturday, but on Sunday we know why why the why uh, the Baptists serve on, on Sunday. Everybody understand that? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody sleep. I need to hear a few amens this morning. Hear you loud and clear. All right. Amen. All right. One of the prominent characters in the lesson is Paul. Paul the Apostle, commonly known as St. Paul and known by the Hebrews name Saul of Tarsus, was a Christian uh, apostle who spread the teachings of Jesus in the first century world. Let me add just uh, another key term to today's lesson, which will give us heads up on the lesson, legalism. Legalism is when one pursues good works in the hopes of earning favor with God. These individuals believe that they literally can themselves, um, themselves um, be accounted uh, for for the works. Legalism believed that Christ, that Christ's finished work on the cross was not enough. 
they must somehow help Jesus out. On the cross, Jesus finished the work that was given to him to do. Only Jesus can declare it is finished and Jesus has. See John 17, 4 and um, 19, 30. Amen. Amen. Evidence suggests that the church in Galatia was founded by Paul on a second visit to the region during the third missionary journey. The church seems to have composed mainly of, of converts from idolatry, but also of Jewish converts who under the influence of Judaizing teachers probably sought to incorporate the rites of Judaism with Christianity and was succeeding in dividing the church. This epistle was written for the purpose of counteracting this Judaizing tendency and recalling the Galatians to the simplicity of the gospel, while also vindicating Paul's claim as a divinely commissioned apostle. The concepts of the guidance of the spirit and of the powerful emotion of genuine love are examined in this passage. Judaism is the religion, the way of life of the people of Judah and, and the Jews. Okay, so the legalists, oh, they had an attitude of strict and rigid adherence to the Mosaic law. Their reliance on observing the law as a means to salvation. And this will give you a sense of what Paul was dealing with. Paul was dealing with a lot of concepts. Just like yesterday, I didn't have time to go into a lot with that young man because there were other people in the line behind me, but they even understood what I was saying because a couple of them said amen. So I didn't want to stand there and do it and, um, and, 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 uh, be evangelist, um, I did my little, my of uh, what I was supposed to do and kept it moving. That's what we have to do sometimes. You don't have to expound a lot, make it clear and keep moving. The book of Galatians, like the book of Romans, explores righteousness and examines how persons not under the law of Moses could experience personal holiness, holiness. So in this book, Paul encourages the Galatians to hold firm to the principles through which they as believers have been taught. And that's what we have to do. We have to hold on to our faith. Paul reminded the believers in Galatia that salvation was not founded in the law, but entirely in Jesus Christ through faith. The Judaizers who demanded Christians to live under the law attached Paul's gospel of freedom on three grounds. First, they attacked Paul personally by denying he was an apostle. You know how it is. Second, they pointed out that God authorized the law. How then can Paul say it should be set aside? And third, they accused Paul of licensing sin. Paul answered each attack in the book of Galatians. Paul defended his apostleship. Paul affirmed that justification is by faith alone. Paul reflected on the morality of freedom. And morality relates to the principles of right and wrong. Paul wrote the book of Galatians to denounce and correct false teachings that had infiltrated the church. Paul was insulted and felt a string of stinging personal attack from those questioning his integrity as a, an apostle. He also thought it was essential to reemphasize his love for the Galatians. Paul reaffirmed the critical and crucial answer to the gospel, how a person received it and how uh, believers can apply it in their daily lives. Paul used every available tool in his theological arsenal to persuade the Galatians to return to the pure gospel. 
Hey, the idea that salvation comes through a personal belief in Jesus Christ and accepting him as Lord and Savior. Any questions, comments, or concerns so far? We're going to get ready to go into to break down the scriptures. So far, so good. That's so good. what Ian said when he jumped off that 50 story building. When he got to 20, floor 25, he said, So far, so good. All right. Galatians 5. Uh, 13 to 15, the freedom of love each um, uh, to love each other. These scriptures tells us that spiritual freedom is not the absence of them, boundaries. Suppose a football player catches the ball and wants to play the game without restriction. He proceeds to run out of the bounds and into the stands to avoid being tackled. Eventually, he re enters the stadium and crosses into the end zone from the opposite direction. He's no longer playing football, but creating chaos. Football can only be football when played within the boundaries of sidelines. So what does Christian freedom look like? Serving one another through love. Remember, biblical love is the decision to seek the well-being of another compassionately righteously and sacrificially since the son of god served as us through love why would his disciples expect uh expect to do anything less think on that when crabs are cooked they play a uh, day they, they're placed in a pot of water as the water temperature within the pot starts to rise the crabs attempt to climb out, only to discover that their fellow crab, crabs pull them back in as they likewise attempt to escape. So when church members assume an every man for himself mindset, rather than the serve through love mindset, mindset, rather than a serve through love mindset, they will will claw and grab one another until all are roasted in the pot. So in verse 15, Paul reminded the Galatians that the rights of others restrict each other's rights. In other words, bite suggests a wounding of the soul and the word devour means stripping away, squandering or wasting. When believers are not motivated by love, they have the potential to act out of self-interest and destroy others. Now, Galatians 5, verses 16 through 18, is free to walk in the spirit. So when scripture talks about our walk, it's talking about the conduct of our lives. To carry out the desire of the flesh is to live life uh, based on a sinful human viewpoint. To walk in the spirit is to discover God's view on a matter, decide to act on that divine perspective, and depend on the Holy Spirit to empower your obedience. Notice that walking by the spirit doesn't mean resting while the spirit does all the work. We are called to walk while trusting in the spirit's empowerment. Walking by the Spirit is obeying the leading of the Holy Spirit by the power of the life of Christ, which he infuses into his people as they trust him to overcome the trials and temptations of life. It's much like walking on a moving sidewalk at the airport. You are walking in dependence on the power at work underneath you. Understand this, that you uh, focus on walking by the Spirit first, and he overrides, not necessarily counsel, the desires of the flesh. To flip that order is either to lose that battle or to settle for flesh management rather than true spiritual transformation. So the Spirit grants the one living by faith a capacity to overcome 
the flesh. This ability supersedes his or her natural capacity to respond to the situation at hand. There's a civil war happening in every Christian, a battle between the flesh and the spirit. In our decision making, we face and pull uh, the pulls of life from two different perspectives with different goals. Choices will lead to different outcomes. The life of faith is the life of walking by the spirit. Now, verse 18 tells us that, that since in the Greek text, there is no article before, uh, before the law, Paul is not only speaking of the law of Moses, but the law principle, which is seeking to use our own strength, the flesh, to have factory or to motivate God to do something. So the difference between living under the law versus living under grace is the difference between utilizing a battery that you must keep recharging versus being continually plugged into the electrical outlet. Now Galatians 5 verses 19 to 21, the works of the flesh, no one must guess what the works of the flesh might be. They don't just reside only in the mind, but demonstrate themselves in human deeds. They include sexual sin, summarized by sexual immorality, witchcraft, and social sins like hatred, jealousy, and selfish ambition. They also include anything similar. Such things are the natural result of living according according to the flesh and our evidence, we are not walking in the spirit. Paul affirms that to walk in, to walk in the works of the flesh continuously is a walk to open the rebe rebellion against God. It is important to understand that works of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. I can't say it enough. Now, Galatians 5, 22 to 23 is the fruit of the spirit. While the works of the flesh destroy the, um, the fruit of the spirit, provide life and refreshment to benefit others. The fruit of the spirit is the life and character of Christ produced in us as we walk in fellowship with him. To love is to seek another person's good especially when that person can do nothing for you in return. Joy is a settled celebration of the soul within us, even when circumstances don't make us happy. Peace results when strife gives way to harmony. To exercise patience is to be long-suffering instead of short-tempered. We demonstrate kindness when we help help rather than hurt. Goodness summarizes the, the virtuous acts and attitude that advance the kingdom of God and benefit others. Faithfulness means dependable, perseverance, and dependability. Gentleness is seen in the one who practices tenderness and submission to God. When we say no to God and yes to God during temptation, we inhabit in uh, self-control. The fruit of the spirit is primarily manifested in our relationship. Galatians 5, 24 to 26, living in the spirit. The verb for keep in step is different from the word for walk in Galatians 5, 16. It means to march in step with your commander so that he can lead you step by step. Therefore, the Holy Spirit must be included in every move we make if we truly want him to lead us. Live based on the uh, dry perspective of God's word and pray for the Spirit's empowerment. The results will be victory over the flesh the production and spiritual fruit and service through love. 
Now Galatians 5, 26 tells us to become, to become conceited regarding spiritual fruit in your life is to forget its source. And it will serve as a quick way to end the spiritual fruit production in your life. The same is true of envying um, the fruit bearing of another. To love your neighbor as yourself is to celebrate the goodness in the lives of our spiritual brothers and sisters, just that we would desire them to do for us. Christian behavior is to lead the, the non saved to the Lord, not to anything or to anyone. Is there any questions, comments, or concerns? Questions? No. All right. No. The lesson application summary. Paul provides a list of emotions and actions that belittle the principles of a Christian lifestyle and warns the believer to avoid at all costs the influence of these selfish tendencies. Paul lists several positive attributes that can be obtained by humans in their lifestyle of embracing the power of the spirit. The motive here is that the faithful can control human impulse that would naturally veer towards evil through the intervention of the spirit that is constant in the everyday lives of Christian disciples. Remaining faithful on this spiritual path is a matter of constantly doing life together with the spirit, learning from and being empowered by God to follow him. For example, Living life in the spirit is a life of obedience to God. When God's people are obedient to the Holy Spirit, they will experience freedom. Living life in the spirit is a life that produces the fruit of the spirit. You are set free for service to serve, to serve one another. And God is the essence of the Christian life. It means being free to serve one another in humility. To serve one another is an opportunity to minister to one another. Ask yourself, how am I serving others in love? Amen. Thank you for the time. Amen, amen. So for people like me who are beginners <laughs> in the word, it's simply saying that the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, and peace, they are the qualities, characters of Jesus Christ. And if we strive to be more like him, to be pleasing in his sight, then it's easy for us to fire up the Holy Spirit within us. But at the same time, we still have that flesh, that sinful nature. So the object is to feed Jesus' qualities and not the flesh. And, um, and we want to be more like Jesus. Once we try to please him in everything we do, we'll find out that the Holy Spirit will have a charge in our bodies. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, thank you for a great lesson. Um, it's actually one of the passages I go to the most. Um, how I check myself, I, I, I acknowledge if I'm living the right way. Um, am I producing the fruits of the spirit? If not, who am I really? What fruit am I producing? Um, there's, there's so much poisonous fruit out here in today's society. Um, we keep on spreading broken people break people. I should say that. Um, but we're supposed to be the the chosen people. We're God's people, and we're supposed to be um, in contrary to the way that the world is flowing. Um, 
thank you for a great lesson. This is a strong word. Um, I got so much. Um, I mean, it even goes all the way back to um, you fill the whole wall just as you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Um, that's the text that I constantly go back to myself. Um, I got to also learn how to love myself too so I can properly love my neighbor. It goes full circle. Um, but yeah, thank you for a great lesson. Thank you. <laughs> well, I have um, my, my big takeaway take um, from the lesson. Very good lesson, very powerful, strong. I actually had to go that go back and write down the different acts of um, flesh and the um, spirits of the fruit just so I could just study on, on those words. But my big takeaway is um, we often have what we are looking for, but we often turn away from God's desiring desiring things of the flesh and we should desire the fruits of the spirit it will help us to be in alignment with god and inherit his kingdom and also following the acts of the flesh can leave us wounded and pain loss with scars and turning away from god we'll always be thirsty and hungry continue to be thirsty and hungry you know trying to find that true satisfaction but the true of uh, the true satisfaction is actually um um, following God's word and the fruit of the spirit. And then again, we will inherit the spirit. Amen. It. But one thing we have to remember that that most of us have been in the world longer than we've been walking with Christ. And all we know is the flesh. Okay. So this is why it's hard sometimes for us to give up the flesh. Okay. Because we're walking in a un, in an unseen world, and the challenge is transformation. A lot of us have problems with change. Okay, we want to hold on to stuff. Okay, we want to hold on to old ideas. That's why uh, those that of us that are in the church, uh, when we bring in new ideas, we have those that want to keep things the same. But when Jesus came, Jesus came for a change. Transformation of our hearts. That was very good. I'm glad you come out with those ideas, with the, with the, with that clarity of the lesson. But I, I have a question about um, the Jewish, um, I guess, um, religion. I know... Um, for a lot of the strict Orthodox Jews, I believe they still study the um, Book of Moses. Yeah. Um, so why is it they haven't partake in the, um, you know, the? Well, I know they don't even like to say the New Testament. So why is it they haven't partake in, you know, these new fruits? Is it, oh. is it because of stubbornness or? It's chosen ignorance. It's, I mean, that's what it comes down to. Um, they refuse to acknowledge Christ was Christ. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're the ones that crucified him, let's be honest. Um, they're not going to acknowledge that they crucified their savior. Although if you go through Isaiah, like he fulfills every every possible like, thing that was supposed to come from but, the But you got to remember they're human just like we are. We ain't yeah. always yeah. accepted Jesus Christ. We That's got true. the same kind of hearts that they had. They are, that's what was, what was wrong with the legalists, okay? They want to incorporate some things. They, they want to change God, God's principles that he has laid out for us. That's the way man is, okay? Negativeness will do that. They don't yeah. see it as God sees. As far as the Jews so we accepting the New Testament, I'll say this. The Jews are still waiting for their Messiah. Right. So they do not accept the New Testament as scripture. And it's not so much that they don't accept the fruit of the spirit because they keep in mind that what we're talking about is even defined in the law of Moses. So Paul is not introducing something new. They just don't accept the New Testament and they don't accept Jesus Christ as savior. Some will accept Jesus Christ as a prophet but none of the Jews, uh, or what you refer to as the Orthodox Jews, uh, will accept Jesus Christ as Savior. Now, there have been some Jews that uh, 
converted to Christianity, but many have not. They're still waiting for their Messiah. So uh, they don't uh, acknowledge what we refer to as the New Testament. And remember, the, the, the title New Testament is not from the Bible. It's a, it's a title that man gave. The New Testament is the writings uh, from the time of Christ to show the actions of Jesus' ministry here on earth. The Old Testament was the prophecy of what was to come, of the Christ that was to come. So the Jews do not accept that Jesus Christ has come as the Savior, the Messiah. That's why Matthew wrote the way he did, to prove that the Messiah had came, but still many did not, re many rejected. And to what Dr. Thompson was saying, you had the Judaizers or the legalizers who wanted to add to. Those were Jews who accepted that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, but wanted to say that you needed the Messiah plus the law, or you needed to convert still to Judaism. You needed to be, um, um, you know, circumcised. You needed, you know, you still needed Judaism, but in Christ, we're all one, you know, so one Lord, one God, one baptism. So that's the main thing. And Dr. Thompson, I didn't get to hear your whole lesson, but I did enjoy it. Um, Galatians uh, uh, verse uh, 13, you know, uh, speaks volumes to me, uh, you know, you know, what we have is, you know, you know, it's not to serve ourselves, but to serve others. And I agree with, with that being the key verse, you know, it's not for our flesh, you know, yeah. we've been saved, we've been set free and, 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 and our job is to serve others. And then I like when it gives the fruit of the spirit, you know, it, it talks about you know, what is not the fruit of the spirit, the spirit, you know, the, the flesh, you know, being that stuff that's of the of the flesh, you know, those fruits, you know, the sinful nature. But when it gets to the fruit of the spirit, there's two words I like, long suffering, right? You know, if we're going to, in gentleness, that's what we use to give others, to have peace with others, to forgive others, to love others. So I like those two most, and I like temperance. You know, you 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 got to have some patience if you want to deal with people. And and I just love this fruit of the spirit because it reminds us that that we were chosen, and 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 if we want to make a difference in the world then we got to serve some people and we got to serve them with loving kindness and tender mercy. Uh, my father-in-law, as we were driving in today, he said, if man's spirit would change and, and we're the change agents, you know, how we live. If man's, you know, we live in a beautiful world that God has created for us, but our spirit is still messed up. If we would just learn to live and walk in the fruit of the spirit, how much better it would be. But you know, it's, it's like everything else, it's a choice. Life is a choice. You can either go left, or God tell you go right, you go left. Okay, there's the consequences on that side, or just like on, on his side. But we need to understand that, that we are capable of so many things against God. So we let the word help us to identify so we can work it out, okay? Work it out, mm -hmm. not talk it out, work it out. And you work it out with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I like it. Yeah, I like it, what Brother Miller was saying. Um, not ignorance. Um, these Jews was taught from generation to generation the five books of the law. And here's this new guy coming in here saying, you don't have to follow the law now. So to them, it, at, when they first started, it was like a cult. It wasn't a true religion to them because from generation to generation, they believe in the Mosaic law. So here's Jesus coming in now and saying, you no longer have to follow the law. I fulfill it. Now, we're going to talk about love. Some of them accept it. They are the legalistic. With, they accepted Christianity, but like Miller said, they want to put some, some traditions in from birth that they follow. 
like circumcision. That that promise was made between God and Moses. So they wanted that to be a part of it. And and it took a long time for Barnabas and Paul to to get a letter from the Jewish council saying you no longer have to follow circumcision. But yet they still included some old laws in it. From this day now, they still have it. And so that's why you have the division now, because um, a lot of Jews still wanted those old traditions that they grew up with, that they passed on to generation to generation. And just like Christians do now, okay, when, when grandma taught us the Lord's Prayer, which is really the disciples' prayer, and they said trespass against them. That's not in the Bible. That's at verse 14. Verse 13 said debts and debtors, but they refused to give it up because that's the way they was taught from generation to generation. And so it's hard when you was taught from birth and passed on to give up your religion. And so that's why we have a problem. Man. Everybody are still not on the same page. Amen. Amen. So we got to remember too now that legalism, okay, the legalists, they believe that Christ's finished work on the cross was not enough. Okay. Amen. That's so right. They, they felt that they, they need to help Jesus out. All right, and so we have to um, understand. You got to go back and do some detailed study, and you don't get your detailed study on a Sunday morning. You have to do it in your time, in your study time. So yes. it's a it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paul didn't abolish the uh, the um the old law. He incorporated it in it. The other um. But the legalists decided that you can't have one without the other. You've got to add some things to it. And Jesus is saying, Paul is telling them that it's finished. They Amen. Wanted- but it wasn't Paul. It wasn't Paul. It was the Jewish council that told Paul what he can teach and what he can't teach. And he had a letter. He had to get a letter for people to even believe what he's teaching. So it, you you got go to the book of Acts and you'll learn this stuff. Amen. And there is still Orthodox Jews who still don't eat certain meat. Still have their kitchen set up so the cheese and stuff is separated. Um, they still don't work on um, Sundays. It's still going on to this day. That's right, but it's still all. But right. I want y'all to remember just one scripture that that will help us. John fifteen five, where what is it? Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. Right. If we stay connected to that vine of Jesus, we're gonna bear much fruit. <clears throat> but once we break that vine, then we ain't gonna have nothing. Amen. Amen. That's where yeah. repentance comes in. Yeah. So it's redundant. It's, it's we're a work in progress. That's basically what it's saying, that we are a work in progress. It's good to understand the, the, past, the, the past, but we living in the now. We are free now. So we need to understand that. It's so important that we be mm-hmm. able to relate Relate to the point that the word can make a change in your life. Hopefully something was said this morning that will help you realize the importance of the fruit because the fruit is the character of God. You don't get them all at one time. You don't go like you're going to a supermarket and pick up some grapes, some apples and and plums or whatever, okay? It's an ongoing experience. 
you need to know when you lose your joy, you know that you have broken communication between you and God. You know when you judge. The lesson last week was talking about judging. You have to repent immediately. Repent. Because you know it's wrong. So it's you sin first in your mind. You make that choice. Amen. It's just like telling a lie. You orchestrate that lie in that head. That's why it's so important that there's so much stuff in our heads that has not gone to our hearts. Because when, when, when things go to our heart, that's when the feet and the hands move. Okay? So we got a lot of sermons in our heads that have not moved to our heart. That's why when I try to teach, I try to teach for transformation. I don't give you a lot of information. That's what teaching is all about, okay? You go to seminaries and, and workshops to get detail. Church school is about transformation. I hope that something that I said this morning that will click in your spirit, okay? So that things will be better as you walk with the king. Amen. 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 Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> what she said. She said you just my, drop the mic. <laughs> my girl, my girl need I what which my girl I ain't heard from her this morning. I've been enjoying the lesson. It's been a very good lesson. Okay. As well as the commentations. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, I just heard from I just heard from T D Jake, you know. <laughs> very good lesson. Anybody else? No, but I like that statement you made. Um, Did you get anything? The transformation. You know, a lot of times we have who just read scripture. But they don't use the scripture to transform their life. And that's what scripture is about. Once we learn it and study it, we need to transform our life. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to allow the that. scripture to, 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 to transform our life. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. We're free. Okay. That's what it's all about. It's freedom. We're not robots. It's a choice. Decision. Allow the love of God to, to 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 come in and penetrate our our, our heart. Amen. Amen. I believe. Uh, I'll say I believe true transformation comes when we apply Romans twelve one and two to our lives. That's right. Then then we can that transformation will come. Amen. Mm -hmm. Like you say, you can take a horse to the trough, but you can't make him drink. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to you plant the seed, God does the rest. Mm -hmm. Some people take two years to change, some take 40 years to change. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have to have so many sermons in your head if you don't take it to the heart. That's there what I got. Go. You have to allow God <laughs> to take it to the heart. Yeah. That's that's one of the biggest problems nowadays, people harden their hearts. And God allow you to do yes, and we have to identify that we're mm -hmm. not so holy, okay, in our walk. And remember what I told you about the difference in the step and walk. Mm -hmm. It's um, Mr. Uh, Ted, uh, Mr. Um, your father-in-law on the line, Joe. Yeah, he's here. Oh, okay. Tell him I say good morning. Oh, thank you. Say good morning. Good morning, lesson. Say that last part again. I'm very thankful to be here. I'm enjoying your conversation. Um, good knowledge. Very good knowledge. And, um, good things to think about, too. Well, thank you for being a part of us this morning. We're glad to have you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm truly glad to be a part of it. 
Amen. So, um, we're kind of running over on time now. Um, I'm going to announce next week's lesson. Um, the natural nature of the kingdom is going to be a devotional reading. It's going to be from Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. The background scripture for the lesson is Romans 14, verses 10 through uh, 23. Um, I'll be next week's facilitator. Um, and I'm going to have uh, Pastor Eccles give us our closing prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, uh, Dr. Trump, Dr. Trump, for this wonderful lesson. And all those who gave um, great commentary. We're grateful to God. Father, we are grateful this morning for another day that you've allowed us. And we come before you today, God, to thank you for this word. We know that your word is a light to our feet, a lamp to our pathway. We want to hide it in our hearts so we won't sin against you. Help us, God, to somehow let our hearts be good soil this morning, so this world won't this word won't fall on hard ground and just be uh, left there for Satan to snatch up. But let our hearts be fertile ground, oh God. They might word might be implanted in our hearts and bring forth much yeah. fruit. We thank you, oh God, for being such a wonderful Savior, for allowing us to see another day for the Sunday school ministry. Continue, God, to use it for your glory. Let the word go out. And let somebody's life be changed, oh God. Help. We know that it's not our method, it's not our education. We know it's not our skills and our communication skills. It is your spirit that takes that word of God and applies it to the hearts of men. So God, take this word of God. One plants, one word, one water, but you are the God that increase. Send an increase, God, not only through this Sunday school, but for every house of God this morning. This world needs word. Yes. People need a word. The streets of Baltimore City and County need a word, God. Let your word go forth and transform lives and save, God, heal and deliver. And we give you praise for it now. We're expecting a great time today in your house, oh God. So, Father, let your spirit fall fresh in each heart. Let our hearts be attuned to what your will is for our lives. Guide us for your glory, for your name's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Walk with the King. Do all God has told you to do. Amen. 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 God bless. Have a great day.